Hey everyone, Solar Primal here, and uh, welcome to another video. But this time we're going to be talking about the new Pokémon Sword and Shield expansion pass that just got announced. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. So Game Freak had their first Pokémon Direct of the year, and of course it was exactly what we weren't expecting. Uh, a lot of people, like myself, actually was expecting a, at least hoping for a, uh, a Diamond and Pearl remake, but. Of course, uh, that would have been a little too early if you think about it, because the game came, uh, Sword and Shield came out in November, and it's only been about three months, so to expect another game would be a little crazy, because, you know, there's still some people that are really involved in playing it. And so they announced these expansion passes, and I think my initial response was, uh, oh no, but after looking through the whole trailer for it, um, I'm actually quite excited for it, and I think this actually might be the right direction that they are gonna go into, at least for the entire year. Like, they're set for the year now. Because um, it's gonna be two-part uh, DLC, and um, they're expanding upon, again, they're at, they're, there's just a ton going on. They're re-adding uh, 100 Pokemon per uh, part to this uh, DLC expansion pass and so that's an extra 200 Pokemon on top of the 400 and so the, that 600 were basically 200 ish away from uh, the full deck so all those people that were really whining about not having the national decks well here you go <laughs> we're we're on our way you just had to give them some time and we're also gonna have Pokemon home uh, show up and be accessible uh, I believe in February so it's next month and that's even before these come out so you're gonna be able to move Pokemon around and I think that's gonna be great and there's just so much to unpack on this there's just a lot <laughs> and um, I'm I'm not gonna hit on everything because that video would take too goddamn long I just want to talk about the stuff that definitely stuck out to me and what I'm excited for for them. If you had paid attention to the beginning portion of this expansion pass trailer, there were actually a few little uh, hints and Easter eggs about stuff. Uh, some, na namely the Kanto starters getting their Gigantamax forms, not just Charizard, but Venusaur and Bulbasaur, and they look pretty dang cool. Uh, I really like Blastoise, and uh, I think uh, Venusaur is, is also awesome. It just looks uh, hilarious to me. So, it just reminds me of a kid, because I used to have a bowl cut when I was a kid. So, yeah, there's those. And then, speaking of Kanto-related stuff, uh, the three legendary birds are coming back in their own new forms. I really like what they're doing with these, actually, because uh, they're taking... Zapdos and and like if you look at the design of it, it's more of a it's basically a Roadrunner, um, and I think that's a really cool redesign for it because um, it's always had that really spiky looking way about itself. But they made the wings smaller, but and made the legs bigger, and it mostly runs out. And I think that's a really neat interpretation of it. And of course, uh, Articuno looks on full SAS mode, um, <laughs> and uh, Moltres just looks pretty dang cool it's got like a really uh, dark fire motif going on so there could be some type changes for it who knows uh, I hope they keep at least their uh, fire ice and lightning um, typing because changing that would be just kind of you know souring the pot a little too much like that's just stirring it a little too much you know what I'm saying putting too many ingredients into a pot so I'm excited about those, and then it turns out the uh, your Galar starter Pokemon are also going to get their own Gigantamax form, and from what I heard, it has to be the one that you started the game with. So in my case, unfortunately, I picked the Score Bunny, and it had a modest nature, and it's known for doing a lot of physical attacks, so it, yeah, it didn't work out that way. Uh, but I think I can change it around. I, I think there's a, yeah, there's mints I can use to change the nature, and then if I'm worried about the IVs and stuff like that, I'm just gonna get that thing level 100 and then do the hyper training, so 
I really got nothing to worry about. I got nothing to complain about, in complete honesty. So, yeah, and I love the designs of these. Uh, they're unique. Um, I like the. Oh man, I don't know their names that well yet. Um, the Grookey one. <laughs> Because uh, I know the first stage ones, I just don't know the rest of them. Uh, he goes on to like a full studio stage drum set, you know, not just the one in front of him. He's got all the like hi hats and stuff, so he can just do guitar, uh, sorry, guitar, drum solos for all day long, you know. <laughs> uh, and it just reminds me of, I don't know how many of you uh, ever saw it, which was that uh, Cadbury Eggs commercial. Not eggs, but Cadbury commercial. Is it Cadbury? I don't remember. It's like the really close up on a gorilla and it zooms out and eventually, uh, and it's playing to Phil Collins uh, in the air tonight, all right? I don't remember what the name of the song is. I'm doing so bad on references right now, but eventually you find out it's got a drum set next to it and it just does a whole like doo 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 doo. <laughs> and I think that's great. Uh, that's what it reminds me of. Um, and then you got the uh, Sobble's uh, uh, Gigantamax thing. Uh, that looks awesome. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> it, it, it's a little silly, but it's also, you know, they haven't done it before. So, why not? And yeah, it's a sniper. <laughs> it's, it's perched up on this tall thing, and it didn't grow bigger. It stayed at the same size. It just, it grew... Maybe that's its tail. I think its tail just got super long and tall. Pretty sure it is. Let's see. Pretty sure that's its tail. And then like makes a little swirly bit. I want to say that's its tail. And then I don't know where it comes up with the actual sniper rifle, but it has one. <laughs> and yeah, it just knows how to snipes. So I think that's really cool. The one I'm way more hyped about, of course, is the score bunny or. Cinderace, which I know that one because I had that one for my starter. Uh, I absolutely love what this Gigantamax form is. Uh, seriously, the first time I saw it, I thought of Naruto. At least just the pose, but the arms cross and uh, the ears are flapping around. So it kind of reminds me of a cloak just kind of floating around. So that that's immediately what I thought about. And then, of course, it's standing on a giant fireball with a face on it. Because of course it could stand on a fireball. Uh, it's got, you know, hot feet. Uh, when I was streaming the other night, uh, one of the uh, people in chat had mentioned that it actually reminds them of Terriermon, if you know Digimon at all. And yeah, yeah, it's got the big ears. So yeah, I I'm looking forward to. Uh, seeing those in action and you know uh, it looks like this Gigantamax thing is basically the new Mega Evolution and uh, just of course limited to three turns when you do it but uh, I think that's so pretty cool because it doesn't restrict uh, Dynamaxing to any certain Pokemon like any Pokemon can Dynamax um, and it's just certain Pokemon can Gigantamax uh, and to give it some really awesome new flair to their look and I'm cool with it you know um, I don't know if they're gonna do anything where some of the Gigantamax forms will change typing of a Pokemon um, they're kinda doing that with the legendaries if they're holding a certain item when you have them in your uh, party before a battle they just show up as say uh, for uh, Zamazenta uh, I hope I got that right. <laughs> uh, this looks like a fighting type, and then once it's in battle, uh, it becomes a fighting steel. And that's because the shield thing is equipped and activated in battle, and, you know, that's kind of neat. So I wonder if that may apply to Gigantamax stuff in the future. We'll just have to wait and see. Again, a lot of people were upset when Sword and Shield came out, and then... It turned out fine, you know, people that were playing it were really enjoying it. I have my gripes with, say, the Wycom system because for some reason it just doesn't want to work. The only solution I keep running into is to basically close your game and open it back up, which is fine, but I hope it gets a little better <laughs> in the future where it doesn't have that issue, but I think that's inherently a Switch issue, but who knows, may they may patch things up, 
Maybe not. But anyways, uh, speaking of patching things up, with these DLC uh, coming out, you don't have to buy the DLC or the expansion pass, more or less, uh, to have access to all the Pokemon game added. It's going to be a free update, so you can just be like, nah, I can't afford that, you know, or I just don't want it, you know, and you can still have access to those Pokemon. You just can't go to those areas, but you can have a friend that has it, and they can trade them over to you. So they're not doing the thing that other games do, I'm not going to name them, but where to progress, you have to pay more, you know? That's like a lot of mobile games, really. Like, even Pokemon Go didn't necessarily restrict you that way, if you think about it. You can buy stuff if you really wanted to. Eventually, you kind of had to with like say the storage space but that was always a choice of yours you could always just restrict yourself <laughs> which I don't know why you would but you never had to buy pokeballs you could just go to a stop swipe it and then look at that you have pokeballs and they made it even better with the adventure sync because if you walk around with at least five kilometers which most people should be doing anyways um, with your phone with you of course uh, then you'll get 20 pokeballs you know, it for free, you know, like for just walking, so. Uh, I like that they've kind of stuck to that where you don't have to buy the expansion pass to enjoy the new content. So, it's for those that are able to or choose to, and that's up to them. I know I will be. I need to figure out how to get that done. Apparently, you can do it in-game. Uh, I was just having troubles last night before I streamed uh, to actually get it to work. And I believe that's still that same. I gotta just close the game and open it back up. We'll see. I haven't had a chance to actually try it because I went to streaming and then, yeah. What I'm curious about coming up though as well is with the first part of the uh, DLC, um, it sounds like it's gonna be a bit of a linear story, but you'll still be able to explore around. Uh, it's kinda gonna be like a new section of the story, if that makes sense. It's almost like a post-game story, so it's essentially continue on um, what you've already done. So I'm, I think that's gonna be really cool because it seems like it's gonna be a bit of a story base where you get a uh, Pokemon which is Cub Fu. I love that name. <laughs> that is, that is on point Nintendo or Game Freak. Thank you for that. So then, as you progress through that part of the DLC. That Pokemon is gonna get stronger and eventually evolve, and then that will get its own Gigantamax form as well, depending on which game you're on. Uh, I'm excited because uh, this is a really interesting way of doing it, um, giving a Pokemon a different Gigantamax, like the one Pokemon, two different types of Gigantamax, depending on which game you got it from. So I think that's really cool. I don't know how they're gonna handle, because as of right now, you can't breed. Gigantamax. So if a Pokemon is has a Gigantamax form and you try and breed it, that new Pokemon will not get Gigantamax. So I don't know if this Pokemon is just going to be a one and done. If people really like it and they want to be able to breed it and give the best stats it can, then uh, they may have to change something. I don't know. Again, we don't know a lot of things because obviously when this came out, it was complete shock and surprise for everybody. So I think all we can do is just wait and see. We just have to kind of enjoy what they're giving us right now and then hope things will get better because they've been doing other stuff too. They've been doing kind of the event uh, max raids. They had one for Gigantamax Snorlax, they got them for the shiny Magikarp, and now they got uh, ones I believe for uh, Colossal. And another one I don't remember. Oh, the uh, the the Appleton Evolution Gigantamax. Uh, so that's great. And actually, that helped me complete a bit of my decks last night because I don't have that one. I don't have Flapple, but I do now. So that was really good. I'm I'm really glad they did that. Oh, Lapras is the other one. Sorry, I completely forgot about that one. So yeah, get your Gigantamax Lapras because it looks amazing. <laughs> so yeah. I really like how they're interpreting this too because the first part is going to be on a nice kind of uh, sunny beach uh, island kind of a motif. Uh, kind of similar to Sun and Moon but less um, uh, let down. 
And <laughs> sorry, zing. Um, and it's gonna be around June, which is essentially summertime. And then the second part of the DLC is gonna be uh, focused more around cold weather and icy conditions and stuff like that. So that is, of course, going to be released around fall, which being in Canada uh, really hits home because now y'all can feel like how we feel like, especially right now. Damn, it's going to get cold up in this area. So those were the things I'm excited about. I know they also talked about um, the Galean form of snor... Mm? Slowpoke. Sorry, a little bit slow in that one. And that looks awesome, and its shiny form is completely gold, with a little darker gold on top. I think that's great. Uh, I look forward to grabbing mine once I get the update. I need to actually update my uh, my game. So, there's just so much that's going on. There's all, And there was also the Legendary for Part 2. I'm not getting to get into that one right now. It, I saw it, I want to get some more info about it. It's going to be a story base apparently as well. I'm looking forward to it. I'm just gonna wait and see. But yeah, those are my takeaways from the Sword and Shield expansion passes, and I'd like to know what you think about all this. Uh, are you excited for it, you're not, or what are things you're hoping to see in the future? Just let me know in the comments down below, let's have a conversation about it, and yeah, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. So, till then you guys, this is Solar Primal signing out, and bye for now.